Hey guys, Pete with Colorado Custom Covers and Decks. Wanted to show you guys how we cut our rafters. Uh, we think we do it the, the right way and wanted to show you how we do it. So obviously this is our frame for our roof and this is typical for what we do for our covers. It's a little different than a house roof, but basic, basic uh, parts here is the footer. Um, in Colorado here, that's 36 inches deep concrete and that's 12 inch big case on. And then we've got our post here. We use Alaskan cedar glue lambs. We've got our beams running back into the house and so those beams are supported on studs within the house. Uh, so sometimes we'll call those posts too. And if you don't have those proper studs, you gotta make sure they're in there. So check with your engineer before you post anything to the house. Uh, but we got the beams running there. And then in this house, because there's a cantilever coming off the house, as you can see that part of the house that bumps out, we're actually not allowed to, ta to attach to there. So we put a freestanding beam hanging off of our beam over there and then also post it into the house on this side. Um, and then we've got our ridge coming up off of that. So we've got our footings, our posts, our beams, and then up in the top is our ridge. And so the things that you need to know to cut rafters is basically just right triangle math, right? So you got your rise, your run, um, and then you could figure out your hypotenuse and the angle that you're gonna be cutting your rafters. So in this case, our rise is very simple. It's going from the top of that ridge and then it's gonna be resting on that beam. And right now the difference between that is 38 inches. So one thing that I like to do uh, is instead of using 38 inches as my rise, I take out however much I'm gonna be taking out of the rafter for my bird's mouth. So when we're using these two by tens for the rafters, I've been taking seven inches out um, or leaving seven inches of wood. So basically I would put my square up on the end of that beam and line up my tape until I hit the seven inch mark up. And so that changes my rise from 38, which is the true rise, to 31, which is my 38 minus my seven inches of wood that I'm leaving on my rafter. So my rise is 31. My run is just the end, uh, the outside of that beam to the outside of this beam. So we go from the ridge to the outside of the beam here. That's my run. And then you could just go, you could do the math, A squared plus B squared is C squared, and then figure out your angles and everything. Or you could just punch it into a right triangle calculator or a construction calculator. So we went and did those numbers. So for here, our rise is 31. Our run is 117 and 5 16 So that's our A and our B. And that makes our hypotenuse 121 and 5 16 And the angle of that raptor at 14.8 degrees. So then what we do is we go and cut a demo one that we can use, basically a tracer board, which is what I did here. So you take that 14 and a half, or 14.8 degrees, scribe that onto this side of the rafter using your speed square. Put your speed square down on there, get it lined up with 14.8 degrees. As you can see is how I did that. You're gonna trace that and you're gonna make that cut. And then from your long point here, which would be the top of your ridge, you're gonna pull down that hypotenuse number that you got. So in our case, it was 121 and 5 feet. So I'm gonna pull that. I'm gonna make a mark on my board. And then I'm gonna square down at that same angle. So then I'm gonna go off my mark there. I'm gonna get my 14.8 degrees. And then I'm gonna come seven inches down and make my mark there and then carry that angle through. And then you could either put like a framing square on here to get this square cut or you could come from this side and do the reciprocal angle. So the reciprocal of 14.8 and 75.2. So that's what I did with my big speed square is I just went set that on 75.2 to make that nice and square. And then I made sure that my bird's mouth cut was only the width of my beam. I actually went like three eighths inches bigger than the width of my beam just so we have a little bit of play in there. But we like to carry down this end of the bird's mouth because otherwise this would get squared over all the way and then it would be hard to attach our tongue and groove nice and tight to the beam. So just to go back over what we talked about, you have your posts, your beams, and your ridge. Make sure those are posted into the ground properly, posted into the house properly. properly. Then you'll do your Pythagorean triangle, right triangle math, figure out your rise and run. That'll give you a hypotenuse, which will give you the measurement from your uh, ridge side all the way down to the end of your bird's mouth cut. Make your cut, knowing your measurements there, and that's how you cut rafters. The last thing you wanna do is go test it up there, put it on one side, drag it all the way over to the other side, make sure it's square on your layout, and it should match everywhere. If you did everything right and square, this one rafter is gonna work for the entire roof. Thanks for watching, guys. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you found this helpful and, and wanna see some more videos.